attention on relationships. And we call it our month of love, loving, and living productively. So you see that there's a tie in there. Love, loving, and living productively. Life without love is empty. That's what I'm just telling you. Whether romantic love or social love, everybody needs love. Everybody. So take God said this love. It's not just living love, it's a love. <laughs> and as amazing as that is, somebody can be looking very strong, old face, looking very hard man. I like it's love that will crack him. Love will crack anybody, I promise you. Love will crack anybody. If you see that man that is bony in the office, if that he has not made love, if he sees love, he will wax cold. All that is good to relax. So, if we're talking about the subject of love and loving and um, today being our last day of August, essentially, I want to ask any questions. Now, you should have questions. You should have questions. You shouldn't be telling me you don't have questions. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, I have what I want to share with you, but I expect you to have questions. Love is not linear. Love is dynamic. Eh? Don't pose you know. It is pride. That you are suffering does not mean you are humble. Mm. That you think that somebody is suffering that is wrong is lie. You can be suffering with good things are correct. And that is pride. You don't know it. You don't know it. Hallelujah. Really? You've never lived a life before to feel like you failed or living it a second time. Mm. It's mm. your first chance. Mm. Yes, sir. Did you get the word? Yes. I'm sorry, you get what I just yes. said. Yes. 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 Uh, if you've lived before and you came and said you are failing now, that's what you say. I'm not going to ask anybody. You are, we have never lived in uh, I've never gone for programs, and then you are not sure who to ask you because all of us are. But some people are behaving like they're the ones hosting. Yeah. <laughs> and they are students too. And they are students too. <laughs> they are students. I went for the program in Joss. The person that is my classmate was not coming here. Welcome. Just pull out his side. My classmates. <laughs> because you don't know who's who. You would think they believe in life before. They, they, they came early. They, they rehearsed like a seat. They are our hosts. Oh, we'll when I saw them say, everybody sit down with your head. Ah, okay, you are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I you two, you are here. We are all students. <laughs> so don't be embarrassed to ask questions. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those of you just take charge like that. Yes. yes. They just take charge. You think that was supposed to be going God's territory? When I found I was in shock. The second one was saying, please come down, sit down, sit down. Ah. I saw him in my hostel. <laughs> is this your room? Oh, okay. <laughs> you are here. I said, why are you behaving like you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Please don't be embarrassed to ask questions. I personally believe brilliant students ask questions. I personally Because means is thinking. Especially when the question is meaningful. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Aaron asked one question this morning. I was very impressed. He said, how do you deal with tests when you have never been tested before? Mm. I said, ah, 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 again. I first of all said, I don't understand questions. He now asked me, he said, this is what I'm trying to say. I said, ah. So don't be there just listening like as if you know. Mm. If you have questions, I have questions for you. You can question. Because some of us, you just don't want to participate. You must think. Yeah. You must think. OK, so before I ask my own question, any questions? From the question, fresh question from that. That Sunday you asked fresh question and mm -hmm. they just won. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's <laughs> how many of you need to pass for? How many of you need to pass the moment? Okay, so okay, at the physical next week, I'll come. When they ask for today? The Monday. Okay, after that Sunday. After that Sunday, I think. So so let's take physical questions. Let's I'll come to your question. Yes, sir. The physical questions, anybody there? Any question. You should have questions. Don't say you don't want to ask questions because the person will suspect they're asking you. Ask, <laughs> ask question. Yeah. And I'll just give you. Okay, one, go to first. One. Another yeah. person, go to first. Uh -huh. I know. Aaron, it's what I was saying. Aaron, yeah. It's not relationship now. What, what, what's your question? Write it down. Write, write down. Let me give it to you. Type this question. Because if you ask questions, now that media will explode. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. But I'm going to make you feel comfortable. We'll be talking about love, loving and um, um, living productive. So if 
The idea is that we are supposed to finish this in a week, give me one month to talk on that. The idea is that we wrap it up today. So we're accommodating questions. Don't worry, we'll answer it in a way that the children will come to you. We'll not make them leave us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you have any questions, please let's ask. Is that okay? Um, you come to me. Yeah. yeah. So any questions? Any question that you can ask, especially if it concerns love, loving, and living. Lovely and smiling. What is your smiling about? Change it to a question. <laughs> you are imagining to people with, with what I say, the way you are smiling, it looks like you are imagining, should I ask, should I not ask? Would you be a good question? Would you understand? I hope you know this. We this, 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 know this already. Barbie, <laughs> <laughs> ask question. Nothing will happen. <laughs> I promise you, nothing will happen. In fact, something will happen, it's just that it's good. Everything will happen. All right, so we have. To Please, if you have any other question, uh, let's take it. Okay, so right now it means that we have like four questions. Victor, you have questions. Eh? You're not sure. You know, I'm the one asking that you ask questions. Not when you come out of me teaching for personal counseling. Eh? Because that your question can answer other people's questions. Eh? Don't come and meet me that I want to tell you something. Don't tell me anything. <laughs> ask, if you don't know what you to do, you write it out. All right? Write it out. I, I don't need to know it. Just ask questions. I just want to be sure I'm not preaching what people are not uh, going through. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So let's hit the ground running. Yeah. And also speak the truth. And the question is, since God is like the embodiment of love, and God can be based on how the determine love should come down. Yes. It's very straightforward. Just don't let your anger do that. Mm. That's my age. The Bible says that God's anger is not forever. It's rough. It's, you know, it's time. Anger is a very positive emotion. It's the energy you need to react against nonsense. Yes. When nonsense is going on, you need to be angry. You know? Do you understand? Eventually, what most young girls will feel is that all they have is their chastity. They don't invest into their minds. They just invest that they are chaste. And it's not only chastity you need to make a good personality as a lady. Chastity is key. Nobody wants to be lewd. Actually, it's supposed to be a default character that you are chaste. So we might not be able to say age 12, 15, 13. As you bond with your child, there are some conversations you start to come up with. For example, the first conversation I had with my children on the subject of sex, my two boys especially, was about some four years ago. That means they must have been maybe 12, 13. Do you understand? And we were talking, and I said, hey, gentlemen, what do you know about it? What do you know? So this world is a world that you don't answer, they will find answers. Yes. This, that one, you don't, don't be deceived that they don't know. Mm -hmm. That's your own generation. They are still mm -hmm. here. Yes. Yes. So you want to approach up that, give them answers, otherwise they will look for it. So my opinion is that 
make a bonding with your child. As you bond with your child, as you grow with it, you will know. That's why I used to say that the intelligence of a parent is inside the parent. Mm -hmm. It's you that knows the compass. When I say, um, so for example, in my house, I say, don't beat my child. Don't beat any of my children. Because I have the intelligence to manage them. You can't beat my child, don't you? If I, they would prefer you beat them than I beat them. Mm -hmm. I might not beat them often. I might not beat them when you want me to beat them. But God bless you if I handle you. You will know that I'm, I'm interested in all this. So the reason I say so is because the intelligence is with me. The, I like this child. I have the intelligence. I know, I know what is happening. That this movement, this behavior will produce this result. It might not be given to their uncle, might not be given to their brothers, might not be given to even close as uh, near relations. So as a mother, you have the intelligence for your child. Just like how you look at your child and say, some, if I used to remember sometimes, they say, oh, we, so she is, how do you know? I don't know if you know what that means, for those that don't understand, that means she's growing teeth. That's why he's teething or she's teething. That's why she's crying. But that's why he won't call coming. How do you know? Because the intelligence is in you. And most times, the mothers are right. They say, the child, do you something? They say, they say, that's what's happening. How do you know? The intelligence is with you. So that conversation is such that a, a, a parent who is in who is smart, who is connected, should watch out for the development of his child. Mm. Because this thing, if I say 12, it can happen at 9. Mm -hmm. If I say 15, it can happen at 20. So it's not, but that's when you're conscious of it. But for a general guy, puberty age is safe. When they start to get to puberty, don't, you don't need to lie to them, just let them start to know. You don't need to go elaborate, okay? Start an introduction. What do you know? Start with what they know. Start with what let them tell you, then you guide their knowledge. Don't go talking. Ask what they know so that you can guide how it flows. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. That intelligence that they didn't teach me in class, I just knew that this discussion, I had to embrace it. I have to talk about it because in almost cartoons now, you see them, please, you say what you want to, where you want to judge you. Let us down on my day and watch a cartoon my children. I can't, it's not safe. So we have those conversations just to guide them. And as they bring up what they know, you guide it. By the time you now know how deep they are, you now know what more to say. And then preempt what they will meet again so that they have something to match their exposure to. I don't know if I Some, I don't know, there are some ladies or men, I say, probably the man, probably the, the lady telling, losing attraction um, the from, yes, and Vice versa. the switch. So, what if you tell, probably in a kind way, because the way we are taught in this house, and because of how the person is thinking, the saying you are body shaming me, why are you body shaming me? Right, that's, that's what you're yeah. Nobody shame me after all. Don't you shame me. I don't know if you shame me. Don't worry, it's not going to shame me. Inside the marriage, it's not going to shame me. Nobody 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 shame me. N
that if I'm telling you in marriage, it's not for shame. It doesn't mean it's right. Now. The Bible says the body is not even our own body again. Yes, sir. So let's start with the fact that it's not your body again. Michael. I have a right to that body. It's not a privilege, a right. Yes, sir. Yes. How do we, without, in a constructive way, you know, you know what I'm saying? See, my opinion is that that way he said it is not planned. There are some things that there is no better way to say it than that to say it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, be a, don't be too courteous with dealing with something that can be cancerous in your mind. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, say it. See, I speak as one who has understanding. Trust me. Forget about those petty petty, I uh, try to sound nice bites, sound bites, nice. <laughs> say what must be said, especially what? in marriage. I listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't over package correction mm. because it will not be effective. Mm. And I'm being honest with you. Don't over -package. I'm not saying you should insult the person's body. I'm not saying you should talk condescendingly. I'm simply saying, say what must be said. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Don't be too polite with your, with your spouse, the one you are married. Under the guide of that question, yes, you see what you have to say. I have, I have discovered I'm losing excitement because of this reason. Don't say it absolutely because you might not even know the reason why I'm losing excitement. You are thinking it is because of that. So put that caveat to it that I'm not sure, but I feel that I'm, I'm not as excited as I should be for whatever reason about how you're treating your body. And I think you can help me. But right? that's another thing that you need to learn, okay? cuts your words. So always sound mutually vulnerable. So right. after saying something to that person that I feel you are doing something wrong, sound mutually vulnerable. Do you know the mutually vulnerable yes. word? Yes, sir. I, I feel you can help, help me. me. Yes. That is why we, we are both in trouble. It's not just go and fix yourself. Do you guys go and say? Yes, sir. You have to learn that help me understand. That means I'm struggling to understand. Do you know those are words that you should find um, usable whenever you are trying to communicate something sensitive, you know? I, I, I'm, I'm having difficulty coping with this kind of situation. I will need help so that I can be a better person for you. You know what that has said? Mm -hmm. We are inside the situation together. It's not, you are giving me problem. You are stressing my life. I don't like what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, you are being attacking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? You may be saying what is true, but you are attacking the person. Yes, sir. So mm -hmm. that's that. I hope that answers our thoughts. Yes, yes, sir. I want to share something with you, but I want to just clear that. Please, if you just came in, you're welcome. We're taking questions and answers with you so that we can get to so, yeah. so, what's the first question again? Uh, supporting partner in relationship. What limits do I have to get to? to doesn't make the man feel too comfortable with at least to don't get married. Okay, thank you very much. So, I'm going to answer that question a little more elaborately in what I want to share. Are you listening? Yes, sir. So you will listen to it, but just so that I don't miss a chance to say it, let me say it. There's nothing wrong with saying it twice. Is that you probably need to deal with your relationship with faith and not fear. All right? There's no support too much to give the person you want to marry. Mm -hmm. I listen. Yes, but don't deal with it out of fear. I'm hoping that the person you're dating is not an irresponsible person. Mm -hmm. So if you are thinking of supporting a responsible person, I don't think <laughs> you should be too much caution on that. You know, maybe there are details to that question that you are afraid of, or you read too much of social media. You know, that says go to show that you are capable. Mm -hmm. A lot of ladies that their regrets in their dating period, that they show that they can handle things, they can be strong, and all that. You know, so I'll say that don't don't let those things guide you. I need to see. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, don't let those things guide you. Don't let those things shape on your mind. It's, it's important that you don't become a victim of societal expectations yeah. or societal opinion. But what I want to add to it is that if you are dating someone already and you fear that you're not responsible, I would ask you to please be reluctant from confirming a date already. Do you understand? Don't, don't confirm your date just yet. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe you need to show some sign that you have concerns and all of that. And if possible, don't give um, definite commitments just yet. 
Um, I would, like I said, I will explain some more as we journey through tonight's teaching and um, the Lord will help us. Now, in the course of tonight's teaching, if I eventually have a question, please don't hesitate to ask it. Are you listening? Yes, yes sir. sir. Don't hesitate to ask it and let's make it count for time. All right, let us pray. Spirit of the living God, I thank you. Thank you. As you go into your word, let your word go into us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Rest in this couple of um, conversations that we've been having with regards to making love, loving, and living productively effective. And tonight, I want to address some of them. On Sunday, remember I spoke about the subject of self esteem. Please, what did I say about self esteem? Who remembers? What did we say about self esteem? Why is self esteem? What is self esteem? Why is, why is it important for you not? Because some people say, it doesn't matter, Joe. It doesn't matter, Joe. God can give me a husband. He's a carpenter. I'm a professor. It doesn't matter. There's going to be a problem. There's going to be, there's, by natural reasoning, there should be a problem. Except your relationship is a miracle. <laughs> yes, because it, it's possible that you, you pull through. But I can tell you that some of those things you watch on Nollywood, not only do they happen, they also happen as bad as they tell us. All right? Here, that. Sometimes you need to check who you are dating. Somebody who does not believe women is women are anything will hardly treat you as anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that girl that is asking, how much should I show my boyfriend or my fiance or my husband or my spouse that I care? That you have today doesn't mean you have tomorrow. Maybe that guy taking care of this woman. So you'll be posing like as if you are God. What do you have that you've not received? What are you what are you boasting about safe? What do you have that the word I have a quiet? Let's hear what. So, my honest opinion is that we should take our relationships with a good self esteem. Have good self assessment of yourself. Don't overthink yourself over importance. And then don't overstate yourself like you are using it. You, say, yeah. you know, I've told you this church. For last one, don't do it in this church. God never called us this. He called us kings, royal priesthood, holy nation. Called to do those are kind of names God called us. Fellow citizens of the high place of God, seated with, together with him in the right hand of God. Not ordinary people in God's sight. Thank God for what God, but thank God for what we also mean to do. Thank God. We mean something to God. I said we mean something to God. And it's not pride to understand that. Some people just in the name of trying to be humble. And they want God and miracles. You are not here. <laughs> you embarrass God's work when you call Yes, sir. Stop that nonsense. Yes, it's not humility. Yes, are you listening? Yes, sir. God called you and told you, say, Lord, I'm the king of God. God say, how can you? It doesn't give for any sense. You call it you is you, you his son. A rat. His son. If you know how I fight my boys when they don't speak boldly, that's me as a mortal father. Yeah, you're not biting from my loins. Ah, hey, me. <laughs> no, 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 You don't embarrass this family. You must open out, talk. What you don't have in strength, you must have in mouth. <laughs> ah, my own child, not speak out. When they said one of my children talks too much, I said, don't worry, give him. He flows. It's the, 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 the proof. It's my family. I didn't feel bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't feel bad because he's a gene. Yes, and I'm aware. Let alone God. God calls you a dignified person. I don't like him. Uh, a you. A Do you think it's because you are what? If not because God loves you personally, you should not wake up tomorrow. And he has plans for you now. I start to call yourself. So let's be guided about our self-esteem. Praise the Lord. And I think I did a good job by mentioning that your self-esteem is not tied to what you have. Luke 12, 15. He says, be careful, focus, who have covetousness. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. A young lady comes up and says, because she's beautiful. <laughs> you know? And she feels that's her self-esteem. They will cut those fingertips. And then you'll understand. 
that your life was not in your fingertips. You must hide who you are in something bigger than what people can see. Anything that materializes can be destroyed. Once it can materialize, it can either depreciate or be destroyed. God showed up. They killed him. Anything that comes into being, it God. That's why he did not come as son. <laughs> if, they, if they kill the son, we, we can have another son again. <laughs> some people don't have, some people don't have the son. God did not come as father. No, he came as son. Yes. Because if you give father, like, if you give father, there's no chance to have another son. <laughs> Can depreciate. It's not anything. So don't be deceived by any external thing. I want to buy that. I want to buy that. I want to buy that. When you buy that, you can't look it. You can't taste it. That's why I call something the tastelessness of success. I told you about it. I want to get it. I want to get it. I want to get it. When you get it, you cannot find anything. That's why you're to be is Christ. Christ is not. And I'm not just trying to sound like a pastor. Please make no mistake. I'm telling you something. I, I know very well. The best way to, to guide your self esteem is in Christ. I'm telling you, I'm not trying to sound nice like one pastor that must say the right thing. I don't owe you that. I'm guided by the word of God. I'm telling you the truth now. There's a position in the spirit called in Christ where you are guided by your, your understanding of what it means to be in Christ. If any man be in Christ, let's go with that. The Bible says, and you are complete in Him. Ah, there's so much benefit in that. When one lady would say, well, look at your skin, it's not popping. Ah, tell him I'm complete in Christ. Yeah. They say, what's the Christ I've made? I will do well without you. Yes. I will do fantastically well without you. I will live fantastically well without you. I'm saying this honestly, and I don't mean to sound anyhow. Don't, even in that relationship, don't over lean on it. You are my life. If you go, I go. <laughs> I love love, but don't make it look like the love of your relationship. Everything just to just disappear. I'm sorry. It's not true. That night, before 14 hours, you eat. I will drink water. Drop water. Drop water. I get what I'm saying here. Yeah. I don't like to confuse that. I, Mama and I discussed it. If I go, better don't stay safe. Just don't remarry to early. <laughs> Give me some time. <laughs> so I get now better. Better remarry. Don't say no, no. Go and settle down. Remarry. I'm saying that both of you are not going anywhere. Yes, I'll be very long. Very, very long. <laughs> but I'm just saying, look. Live your life. Marry someone that you know I don't hate. <laughs> I don't know why someone does not hate. Marry and move forward. I did not be single just because you want to prove that you love me. But is it okay? I will marry you. <laughs> I'm about to get to my message. I've never started. What I want to say is make sure that marriage or relationship is not what summarizes your life. We discussed it. It's not that I'm, I'm, I'm not saying what we discussed it. They don't want to pretend like it cannot happen, even though we don't want it to happen. You understand? But to know something that can happen and not prepare for it is not wise. So I called my lawyer, I wrote and told him my will. And I'm going to live very long. Very long. Very long. Says it's not a possible thing. One more thing, verse 15. It says, Precious to the Lord is the death of a righteous man. And the righteous man is precious to him. It's not a loss on us. Yes, maybe there will be more people out that thought. But those that have thought can do great things. Praise God. Hallelujah. I think I don't have plans for my life. <laughs> <laughs> Precious to the 
precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of this thing. It's precious. Um, and I will arrive with dignity for my father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So please understand that this conversation that we're saying on Sunday about self esteem is very important. The second, I said, Christian sisters, don't be naive. I said it clearly yes, to yes, Christian yes, sisters, yes, especially yes, those of you that call the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. They feel naivety among sisters. Yes. Brothers, look at you. The brothers are not usually the ones that are the victims of naivety. It's, it's painful. So, most times, for example, now sisters are the ones that we wait for someone to come and ask them out. Eh? You understand? I don't skip. Please don't bring it to face towel on my table. You know? Brothers are the ones that, I and mean, sisters are the ones that wait for a brother. So, as a sister, what's your demonstration of value? How do you look? They call you, no, don't call me. How would they marry you if they don't call you? That's what I want to say. That, that thing that you were doing to manage yourself through high school, that was a veteran and support system, may no longer be effective when you get to some levels in life. You must know when to move and become available. For relationships become available to go back. That's your secret or system of keeping chaste in marriage. He dropped that side. So you are now married. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You must include yourself in the acrobatics of a married woman. Otherwise, despite that it was God that took that as your husband, you might never be able to keep happy. And though you are both Christians, but unfulfilled. Thank you. Very yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, today what I want to speak about is about a few things. I will read it around. So, because of time, I'll just boom, 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 boom. And then perhaps any questions are still let us know. The first thing I want to deal with is the subject of fear. Faith over fear in relationships. First part of what I want to discuss tonight. And I want us to know that anything that exists in the future is uncertain. Anything that exists in the future is uncertain. And any smart person that wants to get into the future approaches the future with a sense of of thinking. Please, are you listening? Yes, sir. I'll encourage you to take notes. It will help you. So you can refer to it or record. It will help you. You know? Again, I repeat. Anything that exists in the future is uncertain. Do you agree with me on that? Yes, sir. Yes. Dollars tomorrow is uncertain. <laughs> Any smart malam will not tell you a final price today. Yes, sir. <laughs> say, wait yes. If I not tomorrow, say, we say wait till yeah, 10 o'clock. 10, Let's know what is. Uh, True, anything in the future is uncertain. Mm. Tomorrow, quote and unquote, is uncertain. But faith is what gives us certainty. Mm. Oh, yeah. Are you listening? Faith is what gives us certainty. Fear increases the uncertainty. So, for example, an average lady. It's not sure if she's beautiful enough to attract the attention of the kind of man she desires. Yeah? So her marital destiny is uncertain. She might even be dating someone, but she's not certain. That's why they are careful. You remember we say, Olo, lo, mo. What, How do you translate that for those that don't understand Yoruba? Do you see songs? Eh? Huh? It's God that knows the real husband to be. Something like that. No matter how much you think you are very close, until you marry, you have not married. Yes, oh, yes. Put a ring on it. Then we know you are serious and you are married. So the point I'm making is that because it exists in the future, only faith can make that future crystallize into reality. Now, some of us run our relationships, or even without being in a relationship, we run that relationship with fear. With fear. Are you getting my, what yes, I'm sir. analyzing? We run that relationship in fear that, ah, 
this guy will soon leave me. This guy will soon leave me. The way he's getting angry, he will soon get angry and go. The fear of not being able to be sure you can hold a man down. Because people have left you before. So when you are talking, you are always talking with fear, fear, fear. Nobody knows, but inside your chest, you are shaking. You are like, I'm not sure I can keep this marriage. Even though there's a ring on it sometimes for some people. With Ringo, they are still not sure. Where did you go to? Why do you want to leave me? He has not left to. But something in them makes them feel inadequate to keep a marriage. Probably no example in, at home. Some is even before the marriage that the fear of losing them has started. And fear, I promise you, will make you do wonderful things. Mm. Fear will make you snoop your nose into where you are not looking, you are supposed to, where you are not looking. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing there? Who did you just call? Who did you just call? Show me your phone, show me your phone, show me your phone. Show me your phone. <laughs> Fear. It will spoil anything beautiful. Mm. Even though God gave it to you like this, God, God gave you, take this relationship, keep it, it's your own. Fear will make you lose it. Mm. That's if God himself came, I am God, I am God, there is no one beside me. Take this marriage, this man is your own, keep him. Fear will make you throw it away. Fear. 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 From the Garden of Eden, it has made man lose his dignity. Fear. The fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of being loved. Fear of succeeding. Mm. The fear of failing for some people. The fear of losing what God has given you. Today, you must lose that fear. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, that good thing God has given you must not be lost to fear. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Job 3.25. It says, that which I greatly feared has come upon me. Everybody saw Job having party. Eating turkey and lamb's meat with some berry blast. There was no berry blast before you. <laughs> Somebody cannot, cannot play with your mind again. You say, Daddy, there was no berry blast. Can't you understand? For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come on. It will locate you. Fear has GPS. It will bring what you are afraid of. It will, you know how faith will bring what you are looking for to you? Mm. That's how fear will bring what you are looking for to you. Mm. That you will be a widow early. It will happen mm. if you stay with it in fear. That you will not have child, children on time. It will happen. I'm not the one that made it happen, no. But your fear can navigate your life. Today, you must choose faith over fear. Yes, sir. Say, I choose faith over fear. I choose faith over fear. The yeah. both of them work similar. Similar. That which I feared has come on. That which I believed God too can come upon you. What I believed God for. What I fated for. So I urge you by the mercies of God. Lose your fears. If God gave it to you, he knows you can keep it. The fear of never finding a lady to say yes to you. I said they will say that yes. You will find out your desire of your heart in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I'm not sure you heard what I said. I said you find the desires of your heart. Amen. Faith over fear. Faith over fear. What are some of the things? Let's start first of all by defining what we mean by fear and what we mean by faith quickly. What we mean by fear is very simple. The uncertainty amplified by ignorance. Uncertainty amplified by ignorance and lived out as a lifestyle. Faith over fear. We are defining what fear is. Uncertainty that informs a behavior based on ignorance. The side products of fear is doubt. Am I correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> Self-doubt, doubt of others, doubt of future, doubt of everything. When they say something to you, you are not sure if it's true. <coughs> Excuse me. Disbelief, unbelief, they are all sisters of a, of a kind. Fear. So the word of God says, 
that that man that is double-minded in all his ways should not imagine he will get anything from God. You know, somebody can have a child now and think his child will die. And it's just inside his chest. That's why not responding to fear is not the way to conquer fear. Mm. Uh -huh. Ignoring fear is not the way to win it. All. It is by dealing with it through conscious knowledge. Uh -huh. It's not by ignoring, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. That's not how you win fear. Mm. You, you must research faith. Born out of knowledge to eliminate fear. Because nature abhors vacuum. It's that faith of fear that will stay. Are you listening? Yes, sir. So in James 1, verse 7 and 8, it says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. It says, for he that doubted is like the waves of the sea, tossed to and fro. For let not, okay, so this is, okay, give us verse 6 so that we can have context. Verse 6 says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For it that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven to and fro, with, and with the, driven with the tossed, with, with the wind and tossed. Verse 7 now says that the person that is not asking in faith is driven to and fro. And now says, for let not that man, who is that man? The man that is not asking in faith. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Did you see that? What's the quality of this man? Verse 8. See what it says. It says, a devil-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Will it happen? Will it not happen? I'm up today, I'm down tomorrow. I'm not sure. It will happen. It will happen. It will not happen. He's, he's unstable in all his ways. Look at the last line. Uh, okay, he has already told us. Verse, so it's, that's verse 8. So let another man think he can receive anything from the Lord. It does, is there any other thing after that? No, that's all, but good. Now, just look at what a don't mind it, unstable people. I used to quote these two scriptures together. Are you listening? Yes. Are you listening? Yes, sir. In Genesis 49, and that's why I say to you, if you fail in life, it's because you did not follow what I'm telling you. Yes, sir. I did not resign from my job just to come and pastor people that will not follow. So if you listen, it's that God sent me to you. You will not fail. Amen. Say that amen with certainty. Amen. You know, so, somebody is there now doing something foolish. Instead of him listening to what I'm saying, I think, what's that man saying? I don't need anybody saying to me, I'll share, share, share. Who needs it? My own relationship is 22 years old. Eh? 22. It's not a mistake. Something must have been working yes. 22 years. Yes. 18 going on 19 years of marriage. Something's working somewhere. Better listen. It's 49 verse 2, verse 4. It's true, I can post more. At least up to now. Yeah, God will keep me for the rest of that. But at least 20, yeah, right, right. For 20, 49 verse 4. Are you there? See what it says. See what it says. Verse, let's start from verse 2. For context. This is talking to a man that is bona fide firstborn. Verse 2. See. Gather yourselves together and hear. Ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Take a look. Verse 3 and 4. It says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might. And the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Woo! If they call you that, won't, won't your head swell? Look at the next line, verse 4. It says in verse 4, this excellency, excellency, beginning of strength. They say, but because you are unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. He said, because you are unstable as water, unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel. The same thing, give me Isaiah 33, verse 6. You know, so I need to show you that there's a need to be stable. What makes us stable as Christians? Take a look at what it says. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. Isaiah 33, verse 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Aya. So what counters that instability is wisdom and knowledge. Aya. Somebody say amen. 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 So how do we deal with instability? Instability born out of the uncertainty of the future. It is wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom of what? Wisdom of what God wants you to do. Wisdom of God's will. Are you listening? Yes, sir. There's such a thing as when you know the will of God for your life, you're no longer doubting, should I study physics or should I study chemistry? Should I marry him or not marry him? 
When you know the wisdom of God, and I'm speaking about faith over fear. We're still defending the subject of fear, and I'm just trying to show you what fear can do to you. It can make you unstable, it can make you double-minded. And I'm saying here that the counter to fear and instability is wisdom and knowledge. Someone say wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Say properly like though you have understand. Say wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. One more time, wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. One more time, please. One more time, everybody. Wisdom and knowledge. What does it take to be stable through a relationship? It's wisdom and knowledge. Why are you dating a man that you have not read any book about dating before? You believe your brain can run it. No, tell me, why, why will no relationship book interest you? It's not just smart that if you are going to date a man for the rest of your life, at least read something about relationships. Do you think love is enough? I promise you it's not. Ask any married person. Ask any married person. It's not. <laughs> the same person you are shouting, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Do you know that if, there were, if resurrection was so easy, many husbands would have killed their wives and resurrected them back. They love them, but they would first of all shoot. And they come back to life. Better today, this is I've been seen. Better today, thing. Why? Because at some point you'll be offended in the whole matter. Are you listening? Yes, sir. So why am I bringing this up? I'm trying to bring up the subject that it must be faith over fear. It must be faith over fear. If I were you, I would spend good time preparing for my relationship. I would prepare. I told the children of Next Gen the other day about the story of James and John. Yeah. James spent hours preparing his acts. John started to say, ah, it's time for relationship. Went straight into relationship. Or God, go and prepare. Read a book. For something as important as your lifelong relationship, won't you pray and fast? Even to decide the school you should go to, you should pray and fast. Let alone the relationship for the rest of your life. How about? You're not serious, so you just want luck to favor you. It's not luck that works, it's light. Mm. It's not luck, it's light. When you understand what you are doing, you almost can tell anybody, don't worry, I'm in charge of this one. When my man and I were dating, one of our classmates, because you know, I told you we're classmates, we're practically sitmates. One of my friends, our friends, um, that felt she knew mama and knew I was a pastor, came to meet me and said, ah, with passion. Don't marry her. Don't marry her. Was convincing me all manner. If you see the way I was listening, hey, you would think I'm very serious. Mm? Ah. Jesus. Wow. You see, that's what I would tell you. If you are seeing people, you want to cancel any relationship, don't talk carelessly. Your, your, your counsel does not mean they will obey. Just don't talk. It just, if you see where I was listening, Please wow. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> and if you know me, I can do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Guess what? The lady counseling me. Eh? Her fiance was my own friend. That was reporting her to me <laughs> regularly. I didn't discuss with her. You know, you know, I've just been saying, I want to cancel you. I, I, I didn't try. Once, I didn't. The guy would be telling me, ah, hey, man of God, you know, campus pastor now, man of God, can you call, can you call? I would say, hey, ah, ah. <laughs> it's not all counsel. That you cancel doesn't mean they will take it. Don't be interested in canceling up and down. Well, long and short, they didn't marry you. They, they, they didn't marry, they, in fact, they didn't even go far. That lady married somebody else and divorced the person. So to now know that mama, the same mama and I are still together, how do you think she feels? How do you, she's waiting for that her counsel to come to pass. Do you know when I tell the people that counsel you otherwise? They are waiting for their counsel. Because you're not doing what the counsel suggests that they have not counseled wisely. So they are waiting that they are wise or their wisdom manifests. I get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah she's always oh, not bored. Yeah. <laughs> well, eh? Maybe she should go and watch something upstairs or cancel her. 
But let her cope. The word of God will settle on her spirit. Yes, Are you listening? Yes, Are you listening, please? Yes, so hear me. Do yourself a favor of putting faith. What are the things that will help your faith? It's not Ugboju. You know what I'm about, Ugboju? It will work, it will work. It's not by that. That's what makes some men strangulate their babes. You cannot force me. It must work, Oga. It's not by that. <laughs> and because sometimes, eh, when your wisdom pipe blocks, you resort to physical efforts. Mm. So that's what happens. So what do we do? Let me quickly advise you. I'll advise you that you take out time. Are you listening? Yes, to prepare more. In your singlehood, if you are not dating anybody, read books on relationships. Ask questions. Eh? Don't turn everybody away. Meet people. They will help you know what not to do in your right relationship. You hear what I said? Yes, eh? Meet people. That's one. Number two, one of the things that can increase fear in relationship is premarital sex and in marriage adultery disobedience to moral conduct and especially god's will can undermine the quality of your relationship are you listening yes, sir. you know this this thing eh, the all of us are cool you know the pastor is cool big boy man of god man of god don't don't normalize fornication is a sin it's not good are you listening yes, sir. it will corrupt your mind I'm not trying to sound like a nice man. Please, just trust me. I'm not trying to do that. I hope you believe me. Yes, sir. I'm just telling you the truth. You will be jaundiced. You will be seeing yellow. You can't call it yellow. You say it's black. Because you will just be seeing double. You won't understand why. Are you listening? Yes, sir. What, what can be worse is that you will lose interest in yourselves. After a short while, you begin to doubt whether you are meant for each other. So I want to mention that quickly, that take it out and don't lose it. Number three, increase your practice of hearing the voice of God. This will help you have faith over fear. Avoid cohabiting. And then take the practice of everything that you want to introduce into your relationship or your life first as a discipline, then it becomes a delight, then it becomes a desire. So maybe you are not used to reading. Read. Some of us, you just, please, don't follow social media to judge relationships. Are we blessed tonight? Yes, sir. So it starts as a discipline, it becomes a delight, and it finally stays as a desire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Finally, on finance. Money matters in relationship. No finance, no romance, they say. Still true. That statement has not expired. No finance, no ideas. You even have idea. Eh? <laughs> eh? The cold stone care. Cold stone. No finance, no romance. Very true. Don't play with your money. Don't play with your health. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. I will encourage you that you should please also not allow parental interruptions be too strong on your relationships. Mm. Be clear in your head. That's why one of the things that can make you jaundiced is when you allow friends or frolicking, personal frolicking to corrupt your judgment. You know? Now, for that finance, I want to repeat again. Gentlemen, please let me just tell you something. There's something in you that should feel grateful that you can spend money for someone you love. Yeah. If that thing dies, you are no longer a complete man. No. Mm. Something has died in you. <laughs> if life can make you prostrate that low, you need to recover. Sister, if you notice you are no longer kind, that nothing bothers you again, 
or you have violent, violent thinking. That's how they look like they're innocent. You need to know the kind of violence in some women's hearts. It will shock you. Some have used arrow. I told of one that used battery acid. As in acid of the battery. And poured on her husband. She called me from prison. Kiri kiri. Early in the morning, after prayer, after radio broadcast. I told you the story now. Say, said, man of God, please pray for me. I said, please, what did you do? Eh? When she told me, she said, Pastor, she didn't want to say it clearly. I said, Pastor, Pastor, it was when I did not know. I said, what really happened? I said, Pastor, Pastor. I said, what happened? She said, my husband annoyed me. And then you calculated me. Went to, to the acid not upon your body. Extracted the acid of a liquid battery, you know. Poured it into a, a whatever. And calculated when to baptize the man. <laughs> That's a lot of wickedness. Now you want to come out free with the mercy of God. Ah, no, you know, the funny thing is that she can come out free. Oh. That's how this life is. Oh. And nothing will happen. Uh, it, oh, that was, I promise you, nothing is very, I, didn't, I don't know what happened, but it's very possible she'll come out free and nothing will happen. And she will marry somebody else and life will go on. That's why you, sir, don't be mumu. <laughs> You are sleeping like that. Ah. You your eyes. You know, how Sabi do that. Oh, funny. I know, I don't want to marry such terrorists Amen. in Jesus' name. But what I'm just saying is that if you notice, because I, I don't understand, I'll be seeing my wife going up and down. I'm asking her, what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? Can you Are we asked, though? <laughs> so then he came and poured battery water on you. You did not know. Ah, I'm not sure. What's that? All these guys. Let me tell you something. You see, that you know, is part of the naivety I said some people used to manifest. Naivety. Listen, when we say all things are possible, we say it includes positive and negative. It's naivety to think it's only positive things we are talking about. All things are possible. Means that a woman can leave a man's house after giving birth to six children and go and marry another man. All things are possible. Perpetual safety. I know you are born again, but shine. Oh, that lady now will come out of the prison. She will say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my dear. I'm going to marry somebody else. What do you want to do? She still got child. You meet in heaven, and you must not be in heaven. <laughs> Otherwise, they will send you down. <laughs> <laughs> When you, when you see what's going on in hell, says, you will correct your heart. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. To love you. Praise the Lord. I know not everybody can understand what we are saying. It's okay. Not everybody can laugh. It's okay. But what I just want you to make sure you don't do is to miss the point we are making. Yes. All right, don't miss the point. So be in finances, be hardworking. My gentlemen, be, be generous. There's a way a woman that is good for you comes into your life, and I don't know how to explain it. They bring more money to your life. Mm -hmm. The monies I've never held before started when I got married. Yeah. Cash. Yeah. What to do with it is a different thing. Because some people have it now and start to think of a second wife, you know. But that's, that's not what you should think of. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Then, I would... Um, want to speak about the fact that, um, you know, because we're going to a new month, and I told you that we're talking about purpose, passion, and prosperity, okay? Yes. Purpose, passion, and prosperity. But to wrap up this relationship matter, I want you to also know that over and above everything, you need to pray. Are you listening? You need to pray. There's no perfect theory that can guide you to a perfect destiny. 
as good as prayer. Prayer will weed out what should not be there. What should be there, it will tell you what to do to get it. Prayer will help you eliminate wrong friends. It's amazing. Prayer is an all-utility uh, tool. What is good, pray. What is not good, pray. And I'll add also you need counsel. Are you listening? Yes, you need counsel. But don't deceive yourself that love is not possible. Love is very... And don't enter into this love matter with fear. Because the way you enter will determine how you sustain it. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Avoid your liabilities and mistakes before you get your partner. Some of us, you are actually an asset only on one line. The other part of your life is liability. So you are actually weighing as much as your liability in assets. Do you understand what I just yes, said? Sir. So the girl is saying yes to both an asset and a liability. Why not be a better asset? Praise God. Hallelujah. Outdo your mistakes. Get up. Be brilliant. Be sound. Are we together, please? Yes, sir. Be sound. Have a compass for your life. Make the right friendships. Make the right friendships. Don't pretend you know it or you don't. Humility always goes before you rise. Pride goes always before you fall. All right? And as a gentleman, I have told you before, be the best around you. Don't be saying that. Why are you still looking outside? Should we were dating? Be inspiring. Be inspiring. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Have new visions. Have new dreams. Women can get bored easily. Oh, yes. And get bored easily. So it's new visions that make us see greater future. I don't want to take much time today. I hope you have been blessed. Yes, sir. It's faith over fear. fear. Don't let fear ruin your relationship. Don't let fear ruin your relationship. Yeah. And as a sister, you're trusting God to have a good gentleman. Are you available for one? Are you open for talks? Or they say, please, can we have a number? I say, what do you want to use my number for? I want to use it to play bets. One next bet. Say, what do you want to do with my phone number? I want to give somebody that can call you, that is interested in meeting someone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be kind. Be sweet-hearted. I know life is becoming more complex for, for everybody, but you still need to get your balance. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Finally, this one is finally. Are you listening? Yes, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. So you know I can't be exhaustive in everything. Yes, this is not an attempt to say everything. I'm just trying to touch on as many things as necessary. And don't forget parental consent also is important. Your siblings should not hate your spouse. Huh? Yes, it's important that they give you goodwill support. You did hear? Listen, let me just add this. In all of these things, if you don't have a faithful church or nobody can talk to that, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, she's a witch going somewhere to happen. So my boyfriend doesn't like people talking to him. He's a, he's a monster going to manifest soon. I, his pastor, you don't understand. He just likes to sleep. But that's the kind of person he is. I didn't argue with you. But if it's a Christian relationship you are trusting God for, everybody needs somebody. The way God has ordained it. No pastor. No counselor, no mentor. If I, I'm saying it categorically, he should have a pastor. I said it. Yes. If he doesn't have a pastor, for your sake, he should submit to your pastor. Mm. See, pastor, it's not like that. I won't argue with you. Is it me that I will live with you? Mm. Mm. So it's, just, it's, your, it's what I know I have taught you. Yeah. Because some people just like to argue. You know what you want in your heart. You which? Do you not want me to say something? <laughs> Don't do that to anybody. Go and do what is in your heart. Bad words in your heart. Who will force you? You know your mischief. You now want somebody to validate it. Right. Nonsense. Mm. Not me. I'll tell you, if he doesn't have a pastor, it's a risk going somewhere to happen. And if he's not listening to the word of God, it doesn't mean he's... He cannot even have a pastor and be a monster. Right. So don't... It's, that's not enough, Seth. Let alone, he doesn't even have a pastor. Yeah. Let's quickly read the scripture. Are you listening? Yes, sir. This is my last scripture. My Jesus name. <laughs> You know, a good pastor closes three times. You know. <laughs> and he humbled and suffered thee. So can you just give us Amplified Classic or something? So that won't be... Although I will still need KJV. If there's a way you can do it. 
I like this method of uh, showing uh, the OBS thing of those days. You know. Is it going to come up? So let's read it together. Eh? Are we ready? Yes, sir. Sisters, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Make sure you smell beautiful. Though. You are hearing me? Yes, sir. A nasty smell may not bring a husband, but will definitely chase a good one in me. <laughs> so, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. Let's read. One, two, go. And may God move you, and allow you to order, and bear you with matter, which you should not do, God your father's to the that he might make So the Bible says that God fed them with manna, which they did not know, nor their fathers know. Why? That he, make, that he might make them recognize and personally know that man, this is a principle. Are you listening? Yes, sir. This is not just for Old Testament. This is a principle. Man is going to malfunction when he lives by bread alone. Man malfunctions when he lives by bread alone. This is God talking through Moses. So man is not supposed to live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. I want to put this out to you. That your life must locate its survival in the word of God. This statement is not just a nice statement because some of us just pray for lucky husbands. Your life has a path. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Forget about what has happened to you. I'm speaking to you as God's servant. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Your life has a path in God. None of those paths in God leads to failure. None. None, none of those parts in God, in Christ, leads to failure. What do I mean by that? If in Christ you wanted to marry Adekole, but eventually you married Ad, uh, uh, Ade, or you married Ade Dayo. Which one is good? Why are you confusing me like this? If you wanted to marry Adekole and eventually married Ade Dayo, that Ade Dayo will not lead you to failure. If he's in Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But the greater portion of that scripture says, so that it says, I did it to test what is in your heart. I did it to humble, give me KJV. I did it to humble you. So that you will get one major lesson. And some of us, God has been trying to make you get that lesson since, but you've refused. That the way you are living your life is not how you should live your life. He said, I made you go 40 years. What you could have gone in 40 days? To communicate one point. See it. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. It was intentional. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did they, thy, thy fathers. Okay, so let's go to verse, um, <coughs> verse 2. Show verse 2 so that I can read it in context. Verse 2. Just... Quickly, I just want to share. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee 40 years in the wilderness. What was it for? To humble thee. Are you listening? Yes, Please help me now. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in your heart. God wants to know what is in your heart, sir. He will humble you to prove you to know what is in your heart. Does he not know? He wants you to manifest it. To know what is that. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Or not. Eh? That, that's what he wants to check out. What is in your heart? By your daddy, dad, daddy, dad. Is it in your heart? Is it there? And he says, I'm going to do it to humble thee and to prove it. So that verse 3, look at verse 3. Let's wrap it up. Verse 3, what's next? Verse 3. Help me now. Uh -huh. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna without newest on that. 
that man does not live by bread alone. This is his point. That you are not supposed to live by physical things alone. By outward results alone. That business, don't do it without knowing that it's not the physical that counts alone. That relationship, don't do it like as if God is not needed in it. That only when you are, in, you are in trouble, then you remember you should go to church. And this is something that is not only true for relationships. It's true in our finances. It's true in our personal relationships and lifestyle. That some people, until they are in trouble before they remember God. That man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord that man live. So I, I bring this to us in closure, that you want to take out time to let the word of God constrain your relationship. Are you listening? Yes, sir. That when you're about to do anything in your life, whether in relationship or finance or business, so don't just do it without the constraint of the word of God. You want to get a job, you just believe that it doesn't matter if it's a good job. If it's, once it is KT and G, it's okay. Once it's Shell, it will not share my life. Take out time. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Take out time to pray. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Don't just act like someone that is not taught. You are a child of God. Don't act like one person who is a vagabond. Mm. There, are, there, are, there are many things that look right that are wrong. Mm. Are you listening? Yes, sir. This should not put your life on sea caution alone. It should just make you apply caution before negotiating that bend. Mm. So, I'm simply wrapping up with this. That... You, you want to take out time to hear God's word. Listen to the voice of God in the message. Are you listening? Yes, take time to pray. These are not things that should be strange to you as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Don't think it's, a, it's over spirituality to pray in tongues one hour every day. It's not, that's basic. That's basic. So, if you are not yet in a relationship, are you listening to me? I want to compel you for the whole month of September. If you are trusting God for a relationship this year, this is the word of God from me to you. Go and every day, are you listening? Pray one hour in tongues. Are you listening? Yes, sir. And read Proverbs chapter 1 to chapter 31 throughout September. Are you listening? Yes, sir. And the one thing you are praying, either in tongues or in understanding, is that, Lord, I secure my marital destiny in you. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Sister, if you are the one that doesn't wear lipstick before, wear small. At least wear gloss. <laughs> if you are trusting God for a relationship. Because you don't say, because I finished praying now, they will, they will, that, that will make up for your gloss. Lip, your lip gloss has to still look nice. <laughs> I hope you hear what I'm saying. Because yes, I'm saying that I prayed, God should answer. Wow. One of the answers is wear lip gloss. <laughs> You understand? Yes, sir. Then take out time to stay happy. Don't let depression catch you. Are you hearing? Yes, sir. I know that there could be pain, cramps, menstrual cramps and all those stuff. Try to stay joyful. Eh? Please. Because your husband is coming to take you away. <laughs> now, if you're in a relationship, do the same. Pray one hour every day. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Throughout September. And trust God for a new level of financial joy in your family. Yes. Are you listening? Yes, I can't lie to you. Money changes a lot of arguments. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that? Thing? In a lot of relationships, I used to say that. When you say a gentleman... People that have money say, no problem. What's that? What? Just send it to me on the phone. Send me the text. When you say, when you see people say, you say, you say, I can't hear you. It's network. It's network. Check his phone. You will understand the problem. So, true, true. I want you to please include that to your, so this goes for everybody now. What the single person is looking out for is different. What the married person is looking out for is different. If you can write out what you trust God for, would you believe what I'm saying to you today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do it. Yes, sir. Do what I just said. Live by the word of God. I know you are going to wear good makeups. I know you are going to wear good clothing. But do what I just told you. 
If you couldn't do it in the morning, do it in the night. If you could do it 30 minutes now, do 30 minutes later. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, I don't need to say, Dust here the Lord before you obey me. Yes. That's when I said it. Uh -huh. Take out time to pray. 30 minutes. And now, when you say pray, some of us, they, you want to see, you, they must see you praying. They don't need to see you pray. Stay there. Shoot a free security bashana. Patata. Tete. You are doing the photocopy. You are making the coffee. See, protaka sata But you are timing yourself. I get what I'm trying to say here. I don't mean that you should exclude yourself on the field. Olua, badura, it's, it's good if you have the time. But I'm saying that take out time to make sure it's an hour every day. Do it as a ritual. Just trust me. Will you trust what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Just trust what I've, what I've said. It's not anything bad now. Yes, sir. Eh? Take out that. This man of God, has, I've, I've, I'm not sure I've said this type of thing to you before. Take out time. The witch trying to bewitch you, God will manifest the solution. The crazy guy trying to confuse you, God will show you the way around it. Amen. The one that needs money for the relationship to be better, God will show you what to do. Amen. Should I go forward? Should I stay? Should I turn around and go back? God will show you what to do. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm yes, saying? Sir. I've also tried to make it clear. Avoid premarital conversations, sexual conversations. You hear? Yes, sir. Don't say everybody is doing it too. You are the last person who... <laughs> You are the emperor that has stopped. It's only you remaining. Stop. Yes, sir. Stop. Eh? Stop. We don't have to shout at you before you know we, are not, we don't like it. All right? It's not right. Eh? Stop it. We don't need to start to use the Holy Ghost to sniff whether you are the one or not. Just try to stop. You hear her? And Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate it for this session. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.